Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to go back to Saturn for another potential mission that might happen in the next few years. If everything goes right, that is. We might get to explore the beautiful uh, moon of Saturn known as Enceladus that you see on the screen right now, and if everything goes right again, we might even find life there. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this is Enceladus, and uh, this is a cinematic view of the NASA's mission, a Cassini mission that um, basically finished a few months ago in 2017. Uh, this is based on the NASA's Eyes um, simulation, a free app that you can download from NASA directly. And I'm going to be talking about a potential future mission to this region that is currently being planned by, well, it's actually kind of funny, but it's, it's a Russian billionaire by the name of Yuri Milner. That's right. It's a rich guy with a lot of money and crazy ideas, kind of similar to Elon Musk in that sense. Now, whether this is going to become true or not is another story, uh, but his goals and the fact that he has money to do it makes me really hopeful that it will actually happen. Anyway, so let's uh, go to... And sell this for a second and I'm just going to show you what we're looking at and what this is and give you a little bit more ideas about what Enceladus is and what it is not and um, let's just start with the facts so uh, a few years ago uh, the Cassini mission discovered these plumes coming out of Enceladus this is actually uh, water plumes or water ice plumes and this made us really, really wonder about what's going on in this particular um, planetary system of Saturn. First of all, these plumes are formed by the, uh, well, basically geysers, ice geysers coming out um, and throwing off a lot of, a lot of, a lot of water, uh, up to about 200 kilograms per second. And this is a kind of a type of a cryovolcano um, that shoots out um, basically water vapor, mo molecular hydrogen, and a lot of other volatile and solid matter. Um, and these ice particles um, actually form one of the rings of Saturn that you don't really see here, but it's the E ring of Saturn. And uh, the majority of material is being thrown into the outer space, the rest of it falls back onto the surface. We also realized that Enceladus is geologically active. Basically, its surface changes every few million years, similar to how Earth's surface changes. But here, the surface is obviously made out of various ices, not rocks. This is also um, a very reflective object. It's also very cold. Um, the temperature here is about minus 200 degrees Celsius. And um, it's about 500 kilometers in diameter. So it's not very big. It's um, smaller than our own moon, actually. It's, I believe, the sixth largest moon of Saturn. And um, what's interesting about it is the fact that it seems to have quite a lot of internal heat, which is why we get these plumes coming out here. So the internal heat generates a lot of activity on the outside. And when there is internal heat, you'd expect something liquid to be inside. And so we think that there's a liquid ocean on the, on, on the inside. Here's actually an actual image from the Cassini uh, that it took when it was passing by here, and this is what it looked like. And so we think that all of this is basically liquid water rushing to the outside and being thrown off um, into outer space. Now, we didn't really know much about Enceladus until very recently. As a matter of fact, the first images of Enceladus came uh, to us from Voyager probes back in the 80s. And until uh, we discovered what this is, we didn't think about it very very much as a matter of fact no nasa mission was even planned here until relatively recently um so this is what the actual photo of enceladus looks like oh and by the way this was originally discovered by uh, william herschel uh and originally this uh, moon was discovered by william herschel back in i think it was 1789 a long time ago but he kind of discovered it and forgot about it because he didn't think it was important today though we think it's very important we actually think that this is maybe where we're going to find extraterrestrial life. But NASA is not particularly rich right now. Its funds have been cut dramatically, so it has to decide between very, very limited amounts of missions that it can do. And um, considering the fact that the Cassini mission cost about 3.26 billion US dollars, I don't think they're going back to Saturn anytime soon. As a matter of fact, the 
uh, 1.4 billion was just for the development of the, of the missions, for the research part. Uh, 700 million for, was for the various operational costs. 54 million was for the tracking of the mission um, throughout several years, and about 420 million for the la launch of the vehicle. You know, who would be able to spend this much money? A Russian billionaire, of course. And I think I actually kind of admire him for that. You know, what would you do with billions of dollars if you acquired and accumulated them from various uh, sources? Well, Elon Musk decided to start SpaceX and Tesla. That's cool. This guy decides to go on an adventure. And by this guy, I mean Yuri Melner. He decides to go on an adventure to Saturn and see if he can actually be the first person ever to discover extraterrestrial life. I would totally do it as well. If I had so much money, I would, I would be sending probes left and right. And if he is able to do it, uh, it would probably cost him about one to two billion dollars because it would be a very specific, very direct mission. Um, it would be a mission launched in the next few years and it would probably be even using uh, independent launchers like SpaceX. And what's really cool about it is that it's not particularly impossible or difficult. All you have to do is launch a probe that lands here very similar to how we landed on Titan. And Titan, by the way, is somewhere in the vicinity here. We can actually zoom out of the system here and try to... F oh, there it is. Try to find it. So we did land on Titan during the Cassini mission. And that was already pretty cool. Uh, but landing here was easier because it had atmosphere, so we could have used parachutes. Uh, landing on um, Enceladus is going to be a little bit more challenging because we have to use um, quite... Uh, an intricate device to try to decelerate and land safely here. Unless we decide to somehow crash into the surface here. But crashing probably is not the best idea because you can see there's craters everywhere. So it's hard surface. Uh, and then we, we would want to land on the surface, drill through the surface or melt ourselves through the surface using some sort of a heating source and basically reach the liquid underneath and start investigating what we find there. Now, all of this sounds relatively possible, except for the fact that we also have to send signals continuously back to Earth, telling Earth what we've discovered. So I really hope he totally goes with the mission, and I really hope he actually spends his money wisely and um, finds something there as well. I hope this is actually how we discover life outside of our planet. Uh, because I, I don't think NASA is going to do it anytime soon. I don't think um, European Space Agency any, has any plans. And neither does uh, Chinese Space Agency or even Indian Space Agency. Uh, there's no agency in the world currently planning a mission to Enceladus that would find life. So I really hope that it's going to be a private individual with a lot of money that decides to spend it on the enrichment of our knowledge and understanding of space. So this is kind of what's being planned right now. Uh, there's really nothing else we know about the mission other than it was announced. And he already jumped into planning it. Um, and this is the same person who's actually planning the mission to Alpha Centauri as well. Uh, the mission that was planned by the Facebook founder, um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, Yuri Milner, and uh, Stephen Hawking, they basically have already kind of laid out the plans for that as well. Let's see if this happens, let's see if it's actually going to be successful and we find life on this beautiful, tiny, tiny moon of Saturn. This is how small it is. And uh, maybe, just maybe, we'll have more of these coming in the years to come. Because this is really what it's all about. Discovering things out there. That's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Check out the app called... Um, NASA's eyes and this is a free app that I'm using right now and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always bye bye and I kind of miss Cassini mission. It was probably one of the coolest missions we've ever launched. Being able to land on Titan, being able to explore all of these really really cool moons of Saturn and most importantly teaching us so much about space. Oh well maybe next time.